Hello everyone, let us know something about health insurance which is the market of which is really really underdeveloped in countries like India or any other developing countries. The health insurance are supposed to cover our health issues through an insurance which is generally renewed every year. Um, so, it is a one time payment generally most of the cases we make and then uh, that covers a certain specific disease for a particular time duration and the treatment of certain diseases. So, what happens in these developing countries or the where the insurance market is developing or really underdeveloped? Um, a plenty of people, most of the people are remaining uninsured. So, wo who are those people who remain uninsured? Because we have to target them to make them insured. Those who are poor and near poor, they remain uninsured, right? Who remain uninsured? So, one is those who are poor and near poor. Number two is mostly adults are insured, you know, but not the children because we think they are children, you know, they are not falling sick. So, mostly ch children, those who are uninsured and in some cases, elderly. Number three, those who are unemployed, because if they are unemployed, they are not going to pay, you know, they will fail to pay the insurance premiums. So, nobody is interested to insure them. The fourth is unskilled or informal laborers. As they are, they do not have a formal job or formal salary mechanism, you know, payment mechanism, they are not in the payroll. So, uh, it, is for, it is not uh, possible to track them or to insure them. In many cases, those who are into farming activities or marginal farmers or daily wage laborers, they move from one job to another, from one place to another place. So, it is difficult to track them and to insure them, collect the insurance premium and often they are uneducated, they do not have proper awareness about what to do in terms of when they fall sick with that insurance cards, where to go and there is nobody after they are done with the insurance who can actually help them and they cannot really follow those documents which even being educated we do not. I have never read a insurance document what, what you know we get after doing an insurance So uh, and forget about them. So, these are the people who remain uninsured, but they are the people who generally have poor health status, is not it? So, three primary reasons for which they are not getting their insurance. The number one is employer does not offer a health plan. Nowadays in any formal uh, you know sector, we see the employer offers us a, you know, health insurance schemes. You know, so we only have to pay or the employer pays a certain part, but it is generally whenever we join that job, we are being insured. You know, So, in some cases, in informal cases, say if I have a maid in my home or I have a cook, we generally do not insure them. Right? So, because we are, they are employed in an informal sector, we as an employer, we, we give them money in cash, no pay sleep, nothing and then we are not either interested to give them an insurance. If they fall sick, they may ask for some money, that is a different story altogether at the personal level. But insurance, a specific guarantee against their health payment mechanism, no, it is not there. So, number one is employer not interested. Number two, employee is not eligible for the plan. As they are part timers, they are attached with some other organizations, you know, so the say the um, kind of group D stuffs 
who are generally cleaning, sweeping uh, or the security staffs, they are outsourced from some other organization. Right? So, what happens if we are not interested, we do not know that whether they are their main organization, you know, their main employer are insuring them or not. At least we are not insuring them as an organization because they are having a part time status. The interns, the you know, the, the, the temporary staffs, they are not uh, insured because they do not, uh, they are not eligible to get that insurance. Number three is employee does not buy the plan because it is too expensive. because it is too expensive or they do not perceive the requirement. They think that yeah, they, these guys are young, so nothing is going to happen with them, you know, in a restaurant, in a tea shop, if there are some people walking, you know, a, uh, whom we call Chotu and all these things, they, all these people, they are not insured because they are young and their employer do not think that they are, there is any requirement to insure them. So, uh, and uh, just yesterday I was browsing through the TV and then I saw there is a movie, uh, you know, I do not know, maybe 20 years back. And uh, then uh, the actor is a uh, union leader and then bargaining with the uh, uh, union leader in a construction site and he is bargaining with the manager that or the owner of that, uh, that real estate firm that you need to insure all the, all the labors, you know. So, because the insurer do not perceive that they have to be insured and then one laborer dies because of drinking of alcohol and then the, uh, the, you know, the owner finds their reason that because of these habits they are not sick, they are not well or they are not working properly, so why should we insure them. So, the employers always have their, uh, you know, their logics behind why they do not want to insure a certain section of the population who are not being insured uh, or being approached by the private insurer otherwise or the private insurer in the individual policies are too expensive for them because they are poor, they do not have a permanent job or a permanent uh, you know income, income system. Therefore, it is it's very difficult uh, to measure empirically that whether not having insurance has a uh, you know uh, negative impact on health seeking behavior or not having insurance causes poor health or poor health causes lack of insurance. That if I am, I, I already am sick, so no insurance company comes forward to insure me because you know, otherwise it is a loss making business for them. If I am already sick, so you know, they would not you know, pour money behind my um, health issues every time. So, there is always this ambiguity. Another one is the selection bias, where selection bias, where uh, those who do not choose to buy health insurance because they think that it is not required for them and they are healthier. Yes, I do not want because I am healthier. At, at this age, what will happen to me? At 25, 26, 30, 35, nothing happens to me. So, I, I do not want a health, health insurance. And I am at the age of 21, 22, why? I, I do not see myself falling sick with any serious issues for next 20 years. So, why will I pay for 20 years to a health insurance without getting anything? So, there is a selection bias. But we do not know that because of I do not have a health insurance which might cover my, my health checkup every year, one health checkup. I am not going for a health checkup because I did not choose for that insurance. And because I did not go for the health checkup, I never realized that I am having some issues, maybe some cardiovascular disease, some diabetic problems, cholesterol issues. I never realized that. At around 40, it took a huge shape. So, I do not know whether not having insurance caused me poor health or it is like poor health causes not having insurance. However, 
it is like um, it is very inconclusive, it has remained inconclusive across the globe, but it is also very, very prominent that without insurance people experience poor health. Those who do not have insurance they experience poor health that is the end of the story. So, that means we will require insurance you know that is a like pre prevention comes first before care, cure. So, insurance having insurance is kind of a prevention against the uh, against the uh, curative measures. In countries like India this out of pocket expenditure or heavy expenditure behind health care has remained a major cause of poverty and insurance can be a cushion for that insurance can you know can help people survive out of this but several times poor people they think that it's a luxury to pay uh, an amount who don't get a two square meal you know don't have a certainty about their income over the year you know can't really send their children for proper education how will they go for an insurance or a you know in, in these uh, developing countries it's mostly private insurance how will they send uh, 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 how will they buy a health insurance because they are not getting anything back out of those health insurance out of several other say life insurance you get some money back so you are not gaining anything back right so it's it's not very lucrative for them or it's very difficult to convince convince them so as the number of uninsured grows the policymakers will have an emergency situation when a huge number of people are falling sick asking for services out of public health system because they are poor you know and in a poor country they do not have a really fascinating public health service and the government is finally ending up paying a lot where a lot of people being sick not contributing enough towards the increase of the GDP gross domestic product or the country's income. So, do the uninsured receive necessary health care? The answer is straight no. Generally, what, why, what happens that having higher rates of preventable and or untreated illness is a detrimental factor towards having insurance. That if I have that, uh, if I have already existing diseases I would not be able to get insurance. So, they are you know we will discuss about that uh, later, but what we have seen if we do a comparison between those who are insured and those who are uninsured, the uninsured population have a lot of preventable or the prevalence among the uninsured population for these preventable diseases, preventable hospitalization are way more as compared to the those who are who have insured because if they have insured they go they will go for a treatment they will go to a hospital they can prevent a certain uh, diseases or they can prevent a number of days with uh, morbidities they can save that where the uninsured won't be able to do that are less likely to receive that uh, to, to receive care that they feel they should need. So, they will not go for a so the poor health seeking behavior, they will not go for a uh, hospitalization, they will not go for a treatment or a checkup in a particular clinic or something. As I said, hospitalization can be preventable, have shorter hospital stays that is primarily because if they are you know they are seeing a doctor with a particular cause having insurance you know being paid by the insurance then their status with that particular disease are well uh, above as compared to those who suddenly realize not having insurance did not come for any checkup suddenly realize they have also developed the same disease but at a serious level. So, the hospitalization is way more as compared to uh, those who have insurance because their health status is better than them. And you know the, of course, that death can be prevented because having a better uh, health seeking behavior, we could postpone the you know uh, the death increasing the life expectancy and in, for a particular disease, if I, I have never checked whether I have developed some cancer and suddenly I realize that it is at the final stage, 
I cannot really postpone my death, right? So that is that is a uh, uh, benefit the insurance takers enjoy as compared to those who do not take insurance. So, what insurance companies do basically, they will create a value for their insurance for their products. So, how they create the values? So, first one creating values, yeah. So, they will gather a large number of people and try to sell them their insurance. It can be individually they gather them, it can be they go to an organization and give them a group insurance. But they have to gather a large number of uh, people because it is a risk pool. If we are 10 people here, 9 of them are ab absolutely fine, I have fallen sick, all 10 are paying their insurance, I do not know, you know who is falling sick. I am, I fell sick, I went to the hospital, they are all health insurance premiums are taken together to pay for my, uh, you know, um, my, for my treatment. So, it is known as a risk pool, if they cannot gather a lot of people to cover my insurance, then they are not really, you know, doing a sustainable business. So, they have to cover a lot of people, so that the percentage falling sick is lower and as well as they have uh, enough, enough capital to pay for a particular person's uh, morbidity or disability and they also have their operating costs. So, we will come to that. The second is after gathering these people, they collect their money in terms of the payment, uh, I mean premium, they collect their money and then pay the indemnities when the, I will define what is indemnity, pay indemnities when you know health issues arise. That is the amount they are supposed to pay, these health insurance companies are supposed to pay for this, for the patients or those patients who certainly have the insurance with that particular company. Now, the premium they estimate is equal to the expected payout plus loads. Now, loads are nothing but the operating cost of the health insurance company. Now, what is this operating cost? They do not only, you know, if they collect say 1000 rupees from me, 1000 rupees from 9 other people, so total 10,000 rupees and if I am falling sick, they cannot give me all 10,000 rupees, right? And because they also need to pay the salaries to their employees, they also need to pay for the rent, for the building, electricity, transportation, all other things, you know. So, this, this all other things are known as loads, expenditure towards the operat operations, you know, so the operating cost. And the expected payout are the payout towards the insurance uh, claims, because I claim my insurance back uh, when I am sick, right? So, the expected payout is the total payment they will make against the claims which have arise during a particular period out of their customer base. So, this expected payment payout is they can expect, okay, fine, this is uh, this person Angan who has to pay 10,000 rupees, uh, who has to, you know, who will claim an amount of 10,000 rupees. There is somebody else A, B, C, D, they may also claim 5,000 rupees. So, if my expected claim is higher, I will charge the insurance rate premium higher. Because now we two out of 10 will ask for 15,000 rupees and the insurance company cannot keep 1,000 rupees. Because if they expect us, we ask, we do not ask, different story altogether. But they expect us that uh, based on our profile, we can ask for a payment 15,000 rupees and but they are only collecting 10,000 rupees. So, they may go into a trouble, a loss making business. So, they have to understand that what is their expected payout. On top of that, what is their operation, operating cost, right? If it is just me, 10,000 rupees 
and then they have charged all thousand rupees from ten people and then I ask ten thousand they are giving me all. Now if in that way they are collecting a premium of thousand rupees. So ten people are paying a premium of thousand rupees and total is ten thousand rupees. Yes, and then that should be added with load which is two thousand rupees. Right? And that is how they can collect 12,000 from 10 people and can ask for a premium of 1,200 rupees. We will discuss this again in detail just 5-10 minutes after, um, you know, 5-10 minutes later. So, when we are talking about insurance, there are 5 things, we, uh, 4 things we must remember, you know, in terms of when we are buying an insurance. The first thing is, what is an insurance? So, the insurance is a contract. Or a piece of paper, you know, which offers a contract between the patients and the health insurance company, which offers the following. So, the contract is between the patient and the health insurance company. What is the following? That the insurance company will pay 1 minus C percent of 1 minus C percent, that means not 100 percent. What is this 1 minus C percent? I will tell you of qualified medical expenses. which can be denoted as X, which is the total expense incurred during a time period. Now, I will go one by one. Yes, 1 minus C percent. This C is known as the co-payment. This C is known as the co-payment. Co is together again, co-payment. Now, what is co-payment? When there is a claim from the patients to get that insurance money back because they are sick, somebody in that family household or that particular individual is sick, when there is a claim, the proportion of the claim paid by the patient is the co-payment. That means, this is the C percentage, right? This is the C percentage and this C percentage, if 1 is 100, so if the patient is paying 20 percent, then this is 80 percent which the insurance company is supposed to pay. Yes, so that means the insurance company is not going to pay the entire amount. In some cases, it is 100 percent. In some cases, it is 100 percent, but not all often because certain things say ambulance, the medicines, they are not charged. I mean, uh, they are not covered, right, that the patient has to pay. Uh, or some medical appliances say this a wheelchair or a stick all this you know the, the, the patient has to pay. So, this is what the insurance company will pay of qualified medical expenses. Now, what is this qualified medical expenses? In that document the contract it clearly mentions which are the medical expenses will be covered, which are the diseases will be covered, how far it will be covered you know, whether pregnancy will be covered, childbirth will be or a delivery will be covered, whether my ophthalmology, uh, my eye problems, you know, optometric, uh, optometric problems will be covered. So, it clearly mentions whether my dental problems will be covered. So, only that 80 percent of those which is qualified in my insurance will be incurred during a time period of in one year. Yeah. So, this uh, the insurance contract says and then I need to pay a certain price for that and then that price is known as premium. 
to get that contract I need to pay a price for you. So, this price is known as the premium often given as in terms of P which is paid by the consumer. It is not right to write uh, patient because they are not patient all the time or most of the time when they buy a, uh, an insurance. So, paid by the consumer, price be paid by the consumer when they are purchasing the contract from the insurance company. when they are purchasing a contract. And then we have discussed about this indemnity right over here, indemnities. Now, what is this indemnity? This indemnities are finally what the insurance companies are paying. They are paying 1 minus C percent right. So, in indemnities are the total amount the insurance companies will pay to the healthcare provider or to the patient, pay to the patient or healthcare provider. Yes, and it is 1 minus C percent of the total expenditure X, that is the total medical expenditure, right. So, this is what? This is the 80 percent of the total medical expenditure what they have to pay, the, the insurance companies have to pay, that is the in, uh, indemnity. How they estimate the revenue? The revenue for an insurance company is estimated in terms of, this is again my income minus my costs, right. So, if my income or my revenue, uh, sorry, uh, my revenue is the so, this is the profit sorry the profit is the revenue minus cost. So, if my revenue is summation of all the premiums right that is my revenue that is my earning even those those who are not falling sick they are paying me the premium. So, this is my revenue and the expenses is summation 1 minus c into x. Why summation? It is say I have asked for 10,000, somebody ABCD has asked for 5,000. So, this is my uh, expenses. So, this revenue minus expenses is my profit as an insurance company. This is my profit or earning. Yeah, the insurance company will go bankrupt if they are paying more. So, this is more than the premium. So, if the indemnities or the expenses what they are paying for say 5, 10, 15 patients is more than the total premium they are earning, you know. So, for say out of 100, 90 may not ask for any indemnities or any claim, 10 have asked for the claims. So, the toge together all these claims, if it is more than the premium, total premium they have earned from all these 100 people, then the insurance company will go bankrupt because they are making losses. There comes the idea about actuarially fair premium or actual actuarial fairness. What loosely we discussed just few slides back actuarial fairness. What is actuarial fairness? It is defined in terms of actuarially, actuarially fair premium, actuarially fair premium. Now, what does this mean? This is the average value of indemnity payments, average value of indemnity payments for a population of N, which is their customer base, 
population of n or of n insured people which is their customer base right. So, this is nothing but total uh, indemnity. So, your average value is nothing but your total indemnity of that particular. So, it is nothing but the total indemnity divided by total number of people insured people. Yes, so your total indemnity is summation 1 minus c into x divided by n, this is my average indemnity, right. And if that insurance company charges this actuarially fair premium, then they are paying all their revenue out to meet the claims from the patients and then they do not have any money to pay for their stuffs. So, therefore, this actuarially fair premium is very, very risky because then in this case your P is this. The total payment you are making for the treatment divided by the total number of people and this is summation P which is like P i into n all these you know uh, summation P i into n all these individuals together. So, that means this total P should be more than the total premium should be more than the total indemnity and that is where they will not go bankrupt right. If this this summation P should be more than 1 minus C x and if 1 minus C x by n is more than the individual premium if we are estimating this individual premium based on total expected payout divided by the total number of population that is average expected payout, then I am not actually accounting for the payment for my stuffs. Therefore, we have to keep in mind what is the load. So, when we are estimating the premium that should be expected payout plus loads that is the amount we are giving to the you know for my uh, operation cost towards my operation cost you know so and you can keep them together and divide it by n that should be my actual premium yeah otherwise I may run into losses. How I can estimate the actual fair premium in terms of probability because when we talk about expectation that is actually expected payout that is actually based on the probability of a person of falling sick right a person falling sick will have uh, you know the higher the probability of a person falling sick will be higher my probability to pay for that particular person you know and lesser the probability is closer to 0 that means that person is doing quite well he is like his background says he is physically quite well. So, I am not actually going to make a payment for this person during next one year yes. So, and we never say that that is 0 you know but close to 0 low or high. So, it is not certain or it is not uncertain anything. So, when we estimate the prob uh, actuarially fair premium in terms of probability, we must take into account the probability of falling sick. Which should be multiplied by C which is cost of sickness or of that illness of that particular disease you know cost of treatment. So, you can actually then actuarially estimate this actuarially fair premium as a product of the probability of falling sick multiplied the cost of that treatment of for that particular disease and an insurer needs to estimate this P s into C for every individual customer they do have 
yes and then take an average to get this actually a fair premium because this is an average estimate this is a premium for a one individual this is not the together total right so every individual has a you know has a probability different probability from uh, for falling sick and based on those probabilities they have a different estimate or expected cost to be paid multiply that that is the payment you are going to make for that particular uh, customer together you get the total expected payout again total expected payout not load so whenever you are not estimating load it just gives you the actually actuarially fair premium so again as i said so your total premium actual premium actual and actuarial actuarial is a you know it's a part of it's a subject it's a uh, discipline uh, of mathematics and statistics which basically deals with the risks and uncertainties probabilities so here they are understanding the risk they are studying the risk of a person falling sick or the studying the uh, payment and uh, uh, an insurance based on certain parameters certain probabilistic uh, nature of certain parameters certain variables and that is why they have given it a name of actuarially but when we estimate not actuarially RIA is not there just actually so when I estimate the actual premium we must take actuarially fair premium plus load if we don't account for the load the go, uh, insurance company is going bankrupt yes so therefore we need to keep this uh, do this estimate and then try to understand you know that what is the load so this is the load which we estimate with this actuarially fair premium 10,000 or the premium I am uh, getting expecting a uh, you know expected payout of 10,000 which comes from the you know this PS into C this is nothing but the PS into C and if you have got that if you have uh, got this value just add 2000 with this and then you get a total you know expenditure what as an insurance company you are going to uh, you know incur during a particular period of time divided by this n which is the number of insured patients well insured customers who uh, you know you have covered and this is your actual premium your actuarially fair premium is 1000 your actual premium should be 1200 considering 2000 rupees as the load okay so the private insurance has certain you know uh, to gain the, uh, the 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 profit private insurance are the profit making firms you know they are not doing it for the charity so if the private insurance companies are into the business so they have certain incentives yes and uh, they have to f be in the to be in the competition they have to follow certain strategies now what are those strategies so strategies of private health insurance companies or i will write private ins health insurers strategies of private health insurance insurers so what are the strategies they play number one is they will charge higher premium and they understand that higher they charge lesser they are there or fewer are their customers but they don't mind even if they have fewer number of customers they will charge high but they will say we will cover all these things you know in fact nowadays certain insurance companies are coming to your home or doing some basic health checkups at the home 
how customizing they are making it is very very high the charge the insurance premium is very very high they will come to your home do your do the basic tests you know all these basic health uh, health checkup tests they will do at the home they will give all the apparatus um, and they not everybody can pay that amount you know so they have a very less amount of customers but they don't mind they are making their premium uh, high and then altogether their revenue is high so this is number one number two charge higher co-payments charge higher co-payments so uh, this is one way to make your so one thing is that you earn more here and the other thing is that by charging higher co-payment you are actually decreasing your expenses because if 1 minus cx so it is like decreasing expenses because if you pay 20 percent of you know sorry 80 percent of x that means 20 percent is co-payment is always you know always higher than if you pay only 70 percent or even 60 percent of x that means 40 percent are coming from these patients of co-payment are coming from the patients if you are paying 60 percent of x your indemnity summation 1 minus c into x is actually lower so your expenses is falling so either you increase your revenue here or you decrease your expense here so here increase revenue here decrease expenses both the way you are finding your way to make profits yes and the third one is so over here they will again get fewer uh, customers but they don't mind because they will try to get um, those who are healthy and then they think okay fine and then they will keep the premium low here they can they can afford to keep the premium low here because in the second case yeah premium low here because they by keeping the premium low they are uh, encouraging those who are probably the um, healthier one, educated one, young ones and at the same time even if people look that okay as a customer I need to pay a lot when I am you know going for the claim but they also think that at this young age I am not going to a charge for uh, you know ask for any claim I am not going to fall sick really so why should I really pay a higher premium so I will pay lower premium and as I am not paying uh, you know I am not going to pay for any hospitalization in near future so I even if it is 40 percent 20 percent 60 percent I really don't mind because I am not actually paying anything at the end of the day so my total premium is actually what I am paying and that that is important that I am keeping it low yes so it's a win-win situation again for both of them number three is cherry picking in cherry picking they will selectively find they will selectively find only those who are healthy or young or educated or working with the formal sector you know so picking like when we are given a cake we'll try to pick the cherry you know everybody looks at the cherry so that is the cherry picking so these are the people who are healthy right and then they are not really going to ask for claims in future so these insurance companies they will just try to pick those cherries those healthier people you know so that they are not going to make any indemnities but earning the premiums that is cherry picking we'll have a detailed discussion on cherry picking four is they will only cover low cost health cares or health services so when they say that we will cover a uh, I don't know where did I write 
anyways when they say that we will cover a um is not eligible yeah qualified medical expenses and if those qualified medical expenses what they qualify those uh, the diseases they qualify under a particular insurance if they have kept them as uh, as low cost ones so they don't really cover the treatment costs for cancers they really uh, they don't cover treatment cost for a complicated heart surgery or a brain surgery which costs high so their expense is again low because <coughs> only they will cover for those where they will you know the claim will be some chota mota amount you know the small amount so they really don't bother so these are the four uh, ways where either they are increasing the revenue or they are decreasing the cost to make a way towards profit therefore we will now look at this cherry picking so what this cherry picking says this cherry picking says that find healthier patients find healthier patients and sell insurance only to them to those who are healthier yes sell your insurance okay all right find healthier people and sell insurance only to them yes next one this is known as cherry picking so what they do they will find the healthier people who are educated you know well better jobs younger and well better jobs with formal employment status and with an organization where they have a possibility to do where there is a possibility to have great group insurance group insurance now this group insurance means say they go to infosys yeah or tcs a huge number of young people working there all educated young working with a formal employment status you know and then you approach the hr at tcs or infosys that i want all these 200 you know 200 young people who have joined you this year i want to insure them right so you give a group insurance with a lower premium and all these 200 you join your customer base at one go with not much effort yes and that's your you know all are all are cherries for you you know you are not going to pay for them in near future what you can do you can do a bargaining you can say if the company is also paying some part on behalf of them you can say okay we are keeping the premium low you know and eventually you can offer a lot of health services you know in under group insurance if i can go for a pregnancy coverage i can't gain it i have to pay and uh, you know when i asked that uh, can we get a uh, pregnancy coverage then my insurer said yes 3 years your wife cannot be pregnant and you have to pay some 15 16000 rupees and only the fourth year and that only covers those three year, three days or four days hospitalization or the delivery package you know, often they, do, they don't cover the if the child has to go for a uh, neonatal intensive care treatment you know nicu they don't cover that or anything beyond this three four days they generally don't cover that no again it differs from policies to policies but generally you know they don't cover the uh, entire nine months pregnancy treatment only those three to four days you know and for that i am paying 45000 rupees already maybe with that insurance i can go to a top class tertiary care hospital and again pregnancy is not a disease so nobody actually bothers about that whether they will put four balloons in my car when i am getting my baby to home but this is how they are segmenting the market 
At the same time, not everybody those are insured are being pregnant immediately. So eight years, you know, if a person joins in 21, 22 at the age, if a male, so eight, 10 years, they are not asking for a pregnancy coverage. So, and if you have put some amount for that pregnancy, so it's again, it's an accumulated benefit for you for that long term. Eventually, doing this cherry picking, finding only healthier people, educated young people, there is a serious negative, you know, effect. What is that negative effect towards the society is, I am living this, I am living the sick people, the elderly, poor or those who do not have formal employment out of insurance. And this out of insurance is making them vulnerable to poorer health, creating a death spiral. Yes, so and Again, finally, but they are again profit making institute and the, being a private health insurance. If they do not do that, then they will be paying a lot for this and then certain section they have to do a cherry picking. And if they continue, you know, insuring a higher proportion of the sicker people, they are going to go out of the business because the premium they cannot keep high for those who have retired, for those who are poor, for those who are uneducated. Their health seeking behavior will be poor, they will have a higher vulnerability to fall sick, higher probability to fall sick and then when this probability to fall sick increases, my indemnity increases and if that indemnity, who will cover that? They, those who do not have a higher probability to fall sick, the young ones and then the best, you know, strategy to find those young healthier ones educated ones is to do cherry picking. So, to be in the business, you have to do a bit of cherry picking. You do not have any other option. But how I price, I how I generally price this, you know, the cherry picked people that uh, I do not, I know, I understand that they are healthy and they do not really expect too many things that you, uh, okay, I cover you this, I cover you that. They will say, I do not require them. They are young they are healthy, so they, they are educated, they have a, a better knowledge about the health system, health seeking behavior and all this. So, they will say that I do not require that. So, how will you allure them? So, the number one, when we t talk about the pricing, the cherry picking, then what we do, the first one is lower the premium rate that okay fine you just pay otherwise I charge you know 5000 rupees so you just pay 3000 rupees or 2500 rupees and they, then they say okay fine I can pay you know nothing I do not know what happens you know the, uh, this is really uncertain um, accidents may occur so I, I can go for your insurance if you give me a lower premium rate and the insurance companies also know that even if they go for individually, they, uh, that these people is, are not going to ask for any claim immediately. And if it is a group insurance, they can further, you know, decrease the premium rate. The second is that group insurance. Okay, before this, I will say that they do not mind higher copayment because they are working well, they are young, so do not mind higher copayment. So, keep the co-payment high. So, keep the co-payment rate high. Yes, and third can be group insurance. Yes, for a formal, 
for group insurance for an organization. Yes, so to cherry pick what we do lower premium rate and higher co payment. This is how we fix the price of a particular uh, cherry picked uh, customer. In order to cherry picking, in order to do cherry picking, we have to do one thing just to reduce you know my uh, probability to pay them higher you know just to have uh, a better idea about the uh, profile of my potential customers. Often in terms of group insurance, this uh, health insurance companies will pay the, the uh, will pay the organization or the HO or will pay themselves for the uh, health checkups. So, every year there will be an additional health checkup which will be paid by this health insurance company. So, that health checkup is known as experience rating. Very, very important. Yes, by this they learn that history or the medical history or the health profile that how healthy that person is. Even nowadays with the sedentary lifestyle, with higher prevalence of drinking alcohol, smoking, you know, um, not much of exercise, too much of fat consumption, ready made food. Uh, we have moved to a sedentary lifestyle and then what is happening with that, this kind of nutrition transition uh, where our diet has really shifted from cereal to you know kind of this uh, fat based sugar and salt based diets. We are more prone towards this over nutrition or lifestyle oriented diseases that is cardiovascular diseases, cancer, um, type 2 diabetes. You know, so this you know at a very young age. So the health checking of a health profile is very very required, even if we are going for a well of uh, or well well to do this um, young person. And then once we are doing this uh, health profile or experience rating, how does it help us? It gives us that uh, uh, the discretionary power where we can charge a higher premium from the sicker patient where I can cover my risk towards paying that patient higher in near future as I was expecting otherwise or have no coverage for some pre-existing condition. that okay I already have cholesterol so they may not consider some of the diseases uh, uh, related to cholesterol. I have a high obesity so they may not consider and the insurance systems are allowed to experience rate they will if they are but in all the cases the government sometimes they say that the insurance companies are not allowed to do experience rating in that way because they will leave the insurance companies will leave the sicker people out of the insurance they won't sell the insurance to them. So, the government in some cases they can pass a bill that the insurance company are, companies are not allowed to do experience rating that is illegal or logically wrong. So, the government can insist for a community rating for a community rating that rather than rate rating individual patients or individual customer you can experience rate for a particular community based on a, their one year profile or five years profile for that geographical location for that socio-economic condition. Thank you.